lots of hacks for the microbiome and I want you to take three away from this conversation. Great. Number one, Here we go. feed your microbiome properly. That means get as much fiber into your gut as you can. So like you described at the top of the show, bananas, fruit, vegetables, love it. I want you to aim for the massive 30 grams of fiber a day. Take your time because if you eat it too quickly, you'll blow up like a Zeppelin, you'll fart a load and all your friends will think you're smelly. But you've got to take a bit of time to do it. It takes two or three months to get to that level. But I want you to get lots of lovely green vegetables. I want lots of legumes, which sort of peas and beans. I want brands. I want cereals with all the sort of you know, the good sort of uh, uh, seeds with the husks on it. So plant-based, plant -based, rainbow, a rainbow of food. A rainbow of food. Exactly right. Now, like you said, eating meat is not necessarily bad, but if you're going to eat it, have, try and have white meats and try and reduce the regularity of your meat consumption. What we know, again, is that if you have fermented foods, I think you were talking about sourdough earlier in the show, these improve the diversity of your gut and they're really good to have in your diet if you can do What's it. What's the really good stuff that you ferment in the fridge? Uh, kombucha or kefir. Oh, I love a bit of kefir. Love it. I've, I recommend quite, uh, kefir quite a lot to my patients. Never had it. Oh, you're it's missing out. Yeah. You get like really nice just little kefir yogurts. Oh, it's lush. It's, it's not technically a probiotic for reasons that are too boring to go into right now, but it is a probiotic and you can buy it affordably. It's much, much cheaper than the typical probiotics that you buy that can be very, very expensive. And it's in every Tesco's, every supermarket that you go into today. And, and, but the trick with those things is you've got to take them regularly. You can't just take one off and expect it to work. It will not, which means you've got to take it every day and you've got to take it for at least eight weeks because those bugs have got to engraft into your gut. They've got to stay there and grow there because they're not actually designed to live there, right? Best time of day to take them? those things or in the morning right yeah and so uh that's that that's so diet obviously very very important the other thing i'd recommend for diet is you know your kind of fast food delivery app just delete it it, it because <laughs> what you need to do is you need to make your own food you've got to get your hands dirty you've got to get your hands into the food and you've got to share your food what if the, people can't what if that's not practical i know everybody yeah. can and they should but some people just won't be able to bring themselves to do it. Yeah. So then think about the foods that you're ordering through it because okay. those apps, they typically direct you to fast food, processed food, ultra processed food. And if you're going to do it, make sure you order a portion of vegetables in your order because vegetables really are the key to it. If you can have just seven grams more fiber in your diet, your risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, obesity, diabetes will fall. So it doesn't seem like you're doing a lot, but I promise you, you're really transforming your risk of chronic disease if you do that. Get vaccinated. If you're vaccinated, it means you're much, much less likely to take antibiotics. And we know that antibiotics do a lot of harm to the microbiome. And the second thing is treat antibiotics like the most precious medicine in the world. So get vaccinated for what? Well, the NHS vaccinates um, lots of different conditions. I so, don't know all this. So vaccines know? like, you know, so teenagers will be vaccinated for chronic viruses like HPV, but we also vaccinate for meningitis. We vaccinate for lots of other conditions like TB. But um, we know that when you take vaccines, you dramatically reduce your chance of taking an antibiotic. So the standard vaccines we have as kids. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, COVID-19, we've yeah. just had a global pandemic. We know that during COVID-19, real terms antibiotic prescribing in the NHS went up by 6%. And as soon as the vaccine came in, it dropped again. So vaccines are really, really important because they're like a precision strike on bad bugs. And, and, and they're very, very valuable for protecting the microbiome. And, and, and antibiotics, you really, you know, of course, if your doctor says, hey, you really need them because you're sick take them but you really shouldn't be taking them unless you really 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 need them because if you take them for the wrong reasons they will damage your microbiome and they can sometimes irre irre irreversibly damage the microbiome in some in some people number three nurture your microbiome which means that you've got to do the things that we were talking about before you've got to have real world relationships you've got to get out you've got to play with your mates and go and hang out in the playground because that shares your bugs but if you're a young mum and you have just had a baby, it means you really should think about breastfeeding your kids because we know that that's a really important part in how the microbiome assembles in early life. So we really think that's a key driver. Uh, and it means that you've got to exercise because we know that that's a really important part of the microbiome. And it means that you've got to kiss. <laughs> when it's appropriate to do yeah, so. When it's appropriate to do And you have consent. All yeah. right. And what about yeah. getting out in nature? Can we big up nature again? Oh, for sure we can big up nature. So what we know is that people that live in urban environments 
environments like this great city, London, have a less diverse microbiome and they have less microbes in their gut. And we know that if you live in a rural environment, you have more diverse microbiome. So getting out into nature and connecting with nature is a really important part of looking after your microbiome. And what we want you to do is to bring plants into your home and think about the microbiome in your home too.